day, good night, good morning, whatever uh, time of a day it happens to be in your part of a, the world or whatever part of a globe that you're at. This is Ty Cohen here and I'm pretty excited about today's presentation because it's something that we actually had introduced to a select few of our members uh, months ago back during the early part of the year and it did pretty well. It, I mean actually people had fantastic results with the method that was shown and with the process as well as everything that the gentleman that I'm about to introduce to you had shared with him. So with that said, you know obviously we received just a ton of great responses. We received uh, also some uh, notices from people who had missed out the first time and wanted to just get a chance to see the entire presentation the second time and that's what we're doing here now so if you are ready we will start and what I'm gonna do is I want you to make sure that you have something to write with because you're going to be shown a ton of great content in addition to that make sure I mean you guys know the rules right make sure that you're not interrupted make sure that you're uh, not multitasking that you stay focused on the screen in front of you because I don't want you to miss out on anything this is a pretty awesome method as a matter of fact uh, with what you're about to be shown you'll see how just one Kindle ebook just one book generated over thirty thousand dollars actually thirty thousand five hundred eighty six dollars and twenty five cents to be exact and also generated over three thousand buyer leads in just the span of one week so just uh, about seven days there right and uh, I'll let my guests give you some more information on that but speaking of guests is everyone ready if you can hear me if you can see your screen just say yes 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 put a yes in the chat box use that chat box to ask questions this is going to be a very interactive webinar we want you to ask questions and all right looks like everyone can hear and can see and you know put your name in there as well we like to be able to identify everyone that's watching by name as well so with that speaking of names let me bring on my guest we have with us today mister Johnny Andrews Johnny are you there what's going on peeps oh that's a bit better I was getting a uh, a weird feedback thing coming through the headphones well it looks like Ty is going to be joining us a little bit later so I'm just wanted to kind of like reach out and say what's up since I'll be the dude talking to y'all. Um, first off, before we get started here, <clears throat> um, can everybody hear me? Just throw that into the questions there. And Wayne, I see your questions in there. Thank you. We got Laura. We got Wayne. Good times indeed, folks. Good times indeed. Along with someone whose code name is TP. <clears throat> so we have TP, BJ, Carol Candy. I'm just reading off random names because they come down in alphabetical order. A dude named L possibly would be a woman. It's hard to say. Good times indeed. All right, then. Wayne. Uh, I will take all the questions at the end. So here's what I would like to ask you, because those are excellent questions, and I think a lot of them are going to be answered as I break this stuff down. So, yeah, you'll be you'll be just fine. I will absolutely take care of this stuff. And if they if you feel they have not been answered, then what you need to do is hit me with them again, because what's going to happen is I have to minimize this little screen thing, and then. Uh, I won't be able to see your questions and people will ask more stuff as we go and then I'll get back to it and I'll miss out on it. So just at the end when we do the Q&A, toss those things back in there if that's cool. So just want to let you know I see you and I will more than likely decimate those questions with the fury of a thousand suns. All right, let's hit record on this. There we go. So I'm recording on my end too. I think Ty's recording on his end as well because that would just be awkward if he wasn't. So everybody having a good time? It's the middle of the afternoon on a freaking Thursday. Y'all better be happy. Good stuff? Yep. All right. L, that's your real name. I, it might be N, but you just felt embarrassed because it's harder to say that word. All right. So let's get started here. It's 2.03 my time or 3.03 
according to uh, all these things. All right, so I'm minimizing this stuff so you all have a bunch of chatter. I'm not going to be able to see it. And I'm also getting some weird feedback still. So if anybody has a speaker on, mute yourself. In fact, hang on. Let me see if these presenter people are muted. Webinar backup. Looks like they're muted too. Well, anyway, hopefully this recording doesn't suck. We'll see how this goes. All right then. Ladies and germs. So really quickly, can everybody see this? Put that in the questions because I'm going to pop out of it for a second. So it's full screen. Beautiful. You get to see my delicious face smiling at you. Just want to make sure everybody can see that. Let me pop out of it now. Check the feedback. Yes, yes, yes. Can't see. Good times, good times, good times. Thank you, everybody, for your amazing feedback. Perfect, perfect. All right, good. I'm happy. All right, now I'm going to minimize all of you, not in spirit, just in window. You know, we don't like being minimized as people. Everyone's important. We're all precious snowflakes. All right, there you go. So as you might have imagined, I'm that Johnny Andrews guy. And without a whole lot of pomp and circumstance, I'm just going to kind of fly into this stuff uh, because Ty, for those of you who are just now joining us, uh, he is in transit right now. So he'll probably be, jo he'll probably be jumping on in toward the end of this thing uh, to hurl at me his patented form of uh, chatter, which is good stuff, as you guys know. So anyway, what we're going to talk about today is how we pulled off some shenanigans with the Kindle thing. And what I want to really emphasize here is we actually did this stuff because, you know, Kindle publishing now has become very, uh, it's almost normal now. And what I, what I really love about what we did here was this still has yet to be replicated in terms of uh, folks who are trying like to game the system or trying to use things like keywords. And you've seen like thousands of different Kindle courses out there. And it's awesome because the success rate that I've had with folks on this is, has never been matched. And that's because we do this without scammy sales tactics or tricks. And I think that's a really big, important, super megalithic thing is you want to have, and I'm, going to I'm definitely going to touch on this, but you want to, if you're going to take the time to invest, I'm not even talking money, I'm just talking about the time of your life to invest in something, you want that business to stick around. Like you don't want to go chasing these, uh, you know, these tactics that are like, oh, here's how to do this fast little loophole weirdness thing. No, that doesn't work. So this is like straight up business. And so I'm going to break down how we were able to do this and uh, kind of give you the background on literally all of it and show you how to pretty much blow up in whatever market you want to because that's super cool and it'll be a good time. So this is really kind of a lame three-part or technically four-part overview of what we're going to cover because what I'm actually going to cover is way cooler and it just doesn't fit on one slide. So what we're going to be doing is uh, how to tap into these 300 million Amazon buyers because what you've probably noticed, and, and like I said, we'll talk about this, is that there are a legion of Kindle books out there. I mean, there are millions and millions and millions, and I believe they're saying there's close to 300,000 books being added every year or a little bit more. It might even be closer to 800,000. Possibly. I don't know. So it's almost a million books every year. And there's that, that, what that does is it creates this crush at the bottom of the pyramid, if you will, of just dudes who are never going anywhere ever. And you don't want to get caught up in that. So I'm going to show you how to kind of blow past that. Uh, and then also, you know, having a book is not enough. As you might have guessed, you know, anybody can publish. It's really simple. I'll show you how to do it if you've done it. It's super easy. That'll take probably 45 seconds of our time because it's literally like publishing is, it's, it's no longer like a thing. It's like a button. Publishing is like beep. Oh, there you are. And then I'm going to give you uh, uh, the formula that we use because there's, there's a very specific formula to pull this stuff out. And this is kind of the secret sauce between how, you know, how we were able to pull off uh, over 30 grand in a week. And I think it was, uh, went from 30 grand in a week and it kind of tapered off and it became like 50 grand in a month. And I think we may have done over six figures just with that one tiny little ebook. And then I'll show you obviously how we can take this to the next level. So, uh, you know, I have a course stable to this and all this, but you know, my goal here is to really show you how to do this, is, is to make you walk away with everything you need to pull this stuff off. That, you know, because I, I just enjoy doing that stuff. So if you're all good with that, we shall be moving on here. So I want to give you this warning, and I want to be very clear about this. They, these people that I'm going to show you today, I'm going to show you case studies 
uh, and these are people, obviously I handpicked them, because these are folks who, uh, who did what I showed them to do. It was a closed door pilot program when I was doing this thing. These are folks who just followed the path and obviously modified it. Uh, they adjusted it so that it better suited their needs, and that's what happens. Like, you know, I can give you everything in the world that you need to succeed, but you absolutely have to pay attention to your market. You know, a lot of folks, uh, you know, they've blown up in every market. Like, we've done everything from cookbook to erotica to paranormal romance uh, to health to fitness to business to personal finance. I mean, everything, uh, happiness, uh, wellness, you know, photography. Whatever, like it, it doesn't matter. But you just have to tweak what I'm showing you a little bit. So if I show you a, a personal finance example or a cookbook example, all I have to do is adjust that so that it fits the market that you're specifically wanting to go in. So it's not hard, but I do think it bears mentioning that you'll want to, you know, take some notes on this and then modify it so that it behaves correctly in your market. And obviously, there's no typical results. I mean, it's just there. It's you know, if you do A, B, C, and D, it's not like you're going to make like a billion dollars tomorrow. That's just not how it works. So this is an actual business. This is not like a thing where everybody's going to get, you know, make tons of money tomorrow. Uh, you know, you have to put in time, effort, and energy. So with that wet blanket, uh, you know, upon us all, here's how you're going to get rich with Kindle books. No, I'm totally kidding. It's, <laughs> this is, you know, like I said, it's, it's a legit business. So who am I and why I did this? So I am one of those folks that you probably have not heard from in a while on the guru internet marketing, how to make money online tour circuit. I, for a very long time, was uh, doing, you know, information products on how to, you know, how to make money and things like that. And what ended up happening was the business model behind that was unsustainable. It was really not the healthiest way to run a business because it was based pretty much around traveling all the time. It was a good old boys network, and don't get me wrong, it was super fun, you know, sold millions of dollars online had some of the biggest ClickBank products of all time, and I really like helping people with this stuff. But as a sustainable business, that thing, you probably noticed that a lot of, uh, a lot of these you know, so-called you know, internet marketing gurus have kind of gone away for a lot of things, and, and a lot of them just sort of vanished. I, on the other hand, shifted my entire business model and got out of that sort of stuff just because it did not serve me. And there was another big reason for it, too. And that's because the income and the traffic was so up and down that my wife and uh, you know my wife and I obviously my child at the time could not speak. Uh, we kind of talked about that and decided that this was an unsustainable business model, and I needed to you know really kind of get back into this you know get back into something that was going to be you know instead of putting six figures in the bank account one month and then tapering off to nothing for sixty to ninety days and then doing it again. It needed to be something that was continuous, that was you know capable of growth, and that sort of stuff. And also, you know, how do you explain that, uh, you know, at the school and things? So anyway, we uh, we made a big decision, and I shifted my entire business to something my pa my family would actually understand and be proud of, which came down to publishing. The other factor here, and this is important to keep in mind, size matters, traffic matters, and I'm sure you've heard lots and lots about traffic and things like that. And getting eyeballs to your website or whatever it is that you're doing, that's really the name of the game. Like at the time when you put together a uh, product or a service or whatever it is that you're going to sell somebody, that's great, but then you have to get the traffic. And size in that case matters a lot. So you could see the size of Amazon is massive. I mean, they're like the the the, the fifth biggest site in America in terms of traffic, the tenth in the world, I believe. ClickBank, on the other hand, is definitely good, but it's nowhere near that. And I mean, Amazon will give you traffic. It is fantastic. And also the publishing industry just is cool because it's in such disarray. So I had been a huge fan of being a writer. Ever since I was a psycho, that is actually why I got into business, was to learn how to fund my art. And it, what ended up happening was I you know, I got a little bit away from the artistic part of it and more so into the business end of it. But I look back at what I was doing. I was like, oh my gosh, all these info product launches I had done and been a part of, these things were all essentially self-publishing. It was the exact same methodology behind what was going on in the publishing world just with things that nobody had ever heard about. Like the, the mainstream world had never heard of these uh, internet marketing things like, you know, search engine optimization, all the stuff, at the time at least. Now they have, which is a wonderful thing. And so when in 2007 hit and things like that, and uh, you know the Kindle came out, I'm like, all right, let's 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 you know take a look at this. Let's look into this and see what we can do. Hang on two seconds. It seems we are having some technical difficulties. 
cancel this, minimize this. Ah, oh, the poor child. Hopefully you guys can't hear this. My, I have to confess something. We are having a flood in the basement, and my office, unfortunately, has now been moved upstairs. And uh, if you hear the child, she's woken from her nap. Yeah, kid. There we go. All right, so we will worry about that in just a moment. Any who's it. Um, I shifted my business when they started publishing this stuff on Kindle because I was like, these things are like the biggest people on the planet for this stuff. They've got to clearly know something. So why Amazon? World's number one largest bookseller on earth. Has over 300 million active customers. It's the most trusted merchant on the planet. And they're selling currently 34.2 billion each year. And they're expected by next year to hit about $100 billion. And it's the largest seller of ebooks on the planet. Like even now, where there's been all that Department of Justice shakeup and all this other kind of crazy stuff that was going on with traditional publishers and Apple versus Amazon and Barnes and Noble taking a hit and Kobo coming up, you know, coming up on the pack and stuff like that. All of these things almost didn't even matter when it came to Amazon because they have literally, it, it depends on what genre you're in, but really it comes down to 70 to 80% of the book buying eyeballs on the planet. It's kind of ridiculous. And so this is why you don't, you know, you don't really need to pay a lot of attention to the other places because you could do an amazing job right here. And obviously, you know, why Kindle? It's, well, it's pretty much self-evident. The Kindle app is the most used reading app of all time ever period. I just grabbed these. These are from all over the place, but uh, my favorite one is the CNN where they were reporting uh, a couple of years ago. There were a few hotel chains who were replacing printed Bibles with Kindles, which I thought was kind of hilarious. Uh, but it keeps getting bigger, and what's awesome is now the, you know, obviously the iPhone Plus just came out and the, uh, the iPhone 6 and all those cool things. They, uh, their Kindle reading apps are more popular now than ever. And what's happening is people are starting to read books on mobile devices like freaking crazy. I mean, I, yes, they offer a reading app for a desktop computer, but that's just one of those things where desktops are just kind of like vanishing. It's interesting, like the, if you look at Costco as an indicator of what people are buying, you can see that particular area has been shrinking consistently. But basically, you're looking at, you have the ability to reach uh, kind of like billions of potential buyers. Like we're talking globally now because Kindle puts your books in the hands basically of everybody out there. So the distance between you and your customer is non-existent. It's absolutely non-existent now and that is a very powerful thing to do. So the other part of this, because obviously with building websites is kind of a pain in the tuchus, they do all of that stuff for you. And it's really kind of a good time uh, because you just send traffic to the page, they send traffic to the page, people buy your book, and it's all awesome. So those were the factors that I was looking at when I decided, okay, I'm going to get back into what you know I got into business to do in the first place. Let's go back, look at the books, and all that kind of fun stuff. So my goal was essentially to do something in the neighborhood of, I hired somebody to create these books and publish these books and put them up there for me. And I said, okay, this was obviously back in 2008, and I was like, all right, just do this. It was brand new. Nobody really knew what they were doing or anything like that. Sorry, this uh, for some reason we keep having these crazy little technical difficulties where this little thing keeps popping out. I can't see my own screen. There we go. Let's try this again. There we go. Perfect. All right, so the goal is basically that if I could sell on the biggest ebook distribution platform on the planet, 15 copies per month on average at about $2.99 because that's the point where you get to keep 70% of the books. I should be able to pull off about $13,800, you know, give or take. And this is what's nice is when you look at this kind of thing, my, I had shifted my business model dramatically from how do I get rich tomorrow to how can I grow a sustainable, scalable business. A dramatically different conversation and concept. So it's really important to keep that in mind. Now there was sort of a little caveat to this here uh, that was what were my actual results. Well, my best month I made less than $190 and it just stuff just was not selling and I'm like what's going on here because there this is the biggest ebook site on the planet. Like what was, what could I possibly have done wrong? And so I, I, I had a moment of humble, you know, kind of like humility, I guess you could say, where I suddenly realized that, you know, 
I probably don't know as much as Amazon does, so maybe I should figure, instead of saying it's their fault, maybe I would look inward and say maybe I did something wrong. And so I went out and I actually bought some of my books, and that's when I sort of figured this thing out. I was like, oh, there we go. Rule number one, and this is my rule number one, and it's now become sort of a staple of the industry, is don't publish crap. At the time when Kindle first came out, and it's kind of like how you know every social media platform or every platform in the world kind of allows anything to happen just so that they can grow and then sort of like clamp down on stuff later. I had gone out and I you know followed what the the people who were publishing the courses said you know publish private label rights, master resale rights, that kind of thing, and I had gone and done that. It didn't work because the books were garbage. People didn't want to do that, so I was looking at this as simply, I was asking the question, how can I make money with this instead of how can I provide really high level quality content? And so that was where I was, oh man, this is ridiculous. So you know, I very quickly went and unpublished everything because the thing you have to remember is, and, and in internet marketing, we can really get sucked into this, looking at clicks and thinking about conversions and words like traffic. That means people. And it's about people. It's about real, living, breathing human beings. And when you keep that in mind and you focus on what's then called the user experience, and this is getting to be sort of like the big buzzword or the big concept in app development, is what is the user experience? When you focus on that rather than on volume, the rest kind of takes care of itself in a lot of ways. And I'll show you how that works. So. There you go. Here's my public service announcement. Please don't do this. In fact, uh, at the time, I, I unpublished these things myself. Uh, but now Amazon won't even let them happen, and they'll ban your account if you try to do it. So don't, 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 please don't do that. All right, let me give you a great quick case study here. Uh, this, is, this was a uh, message we got in the forum. It was super cool. Uh, came from one of my very first students. He's like, all right, using my old POR-based books, he'd reached 5,500 in January for 56 titles. But then my account got slapped and I lost a lot. Using, using your methods, I've now got 12 quality, 100% original titles published from the 1st to the 10th of March. He'd already earned 3,636 from US sales alone. So he was pushing, I mean, I'm just, I'm just kind of ripping through this, but he pulled off uh, $6,288 in the first 10 days of March by doing this the right way, and that's really, really important. So there you go. That's what this takes is you do it the right way. Number one, it's easier. Number two, you're just probably going to end up making more money. That's pretty cool. <clears throat> So this is what I did. So I took those what I call bottom feeder books, and I created my own. It was called How to Finally Live Debt-Free and Wealthy. And at the time, I was kind of thinking, hey, maybe I want to get into the personal finance space. Let's see what happens. So I released this book, and within about 13 hours, went from not really existing to outselling these New York Times, these huge heavy hitter New York Times bestsellers like Dave Ramsey, Susie Orman, Robert Kiyosaki. It was awesome, and it did it a whole bunch more. And then I was like, okay, well, nonfiction is actually very, very easy to do this with. And I was like, let's do a bit of more of a challenge because uh, fiction, there, it was very difficult at the time to find distribution channels for this kind of stuff. I'm like, well, maybe I can do it. And so I went out and I used some techniques, and uh, we put to, I, I, I cobbled together this little vampire anthology and ended up selling, outselling uh, Stephen King. It was super cool. So really excited. So I held that for a whole five hours, but that, the test worked. So all of this stuff was absolutely happening. It was super awesome. So who's this going to benefit? And honestly, the answer is anybody with a business or who wants to make money with books. I mean, really, if you want to earn a living as a fiction author, this is definitely going to help you. But what's even cooler is if you want to earn a living with, you know, with using a book as a lead generator to your business. So author, speaker, coaches, entrepreneurs, marketers, employees, business owners, startup, basically everybody. And what it can do for you is you can use this to launch a career, explode your business, get some respect, earn some money, build a huge list. The list building for books is phenomenal. Instant authority, instant celebrity, you know, you can outpace your competition. And so you go from that, and then each one of those gives three to five talking points. Then all you do is write three to five pages on each one of those bullet points and work your way all the way up. And uh, one thing you could do is, is get a little anecdote or a story to tell at the beginning of each one that drives your point home. 
and it works. I mean, and one thing I do is a, pro a process called batching. And so every morning I wake up and I write for seven minutes, and that's how I start it off. And then I will break up my writing schedule so that it takes less than two hours a day. I type about 700 words a minute, and so I'll do about 700 words per seven minutes. I can sometimes do as many as 8,000 words in a day in less than two hours. It depends, obviously, on, you know, if I've had some coffee or if I, maybe I was up doing something I shouldn't, you know, the evening previous. But it's not hard, and you could be done. If you have a job, you can literally crank out an entire novel in 15 days. In fact, uh, uh, coming up in November is NaNoWriMo. It's the National uh, Novel Writing Month. I'm going to be participating in that with my first ever full-length fiction novel. Uh, so it's a one month where everybody sits down and cranks out a book. I have a feeling, because I've been teaching myself to do this, I'll probably be done with it in the first maybe 10 to 12 days. So that's one way to do it. It's very quick. It's very easy. You have to focus for a limited amount of time, and then you, you can give it off to an editor. It's pretty cool. Uh, use a ghostwriter. That's hands-free, obviously. Uh, one thing I highly recommend is when you get a ghostwriter, make sure that you hire one who is who's, who's, his native language is from the country that you're targeting. So if you're looking for, you know, if, you're, if your market is Americans, make sure that you have an American author. So you'll, you'll spend a little bit more, but it, it totally works. It's not that much more either. Uh, speak it or get it transcribed. Huge favorite of mine. In fact, I just published a book uh, called How to, what is it, How, uh, how to Launch a, anyway, if, you, if you check my name in uh, Amazon, you'll see it. But that particular book, I wanted it was just a test specifically of this method. Work like a super champ. Uh, you can Google transcription services. And so I took an interview that I did with a self-published USA Today bestseller named Quinn Loftus. And I had it transcribed, and then I had it formatted. It cost less than 150 bucks to do that. And it's a great little book. It's a, it's a good little read. It uh, teaches you how, how she woke up one morning and literally put one foot in front of the other and, and published a series of books and hit the USA Today bestsellers list. No publishers involved at all. Uh, interview experts. This is great. That's actually uh, a, sort of a hybrid of the speak and transcribe slash thing that I just talked about. I interview experts constantly on my show, and a lot of those things, uh, you know, when it's a really good interview, I'll get it transcribed, and then I'll publish that as the book. Totally fine way to do things. The other thing is be interviewed by somebody. There is nothing wrong with that. So if you want to be the expert, in this thing, you can be then interviewed by somebody. So those are ways to do this that are very, very, very simple. That uh, I mean, let's look at the Quinn Loftus thing that I did. That interview was probably two and a half hours long. It was a really easy one. It took five days to get it transcribed, cost less than $100, and was on Kindle, I want to say, in less than nine days. So that is a really good way to do things, I think. Let's see here. I'm having another one of those fun little technical difficulties. Hold, please. There we go. Bang. All right. Thank you, GoToWebinar, for your awesomeness today. All right. Pen name. Here's a super cool question. So if you want to be anonymous or if you're in more than one market, does this still work if you're using a pen name? And the answer is absolutely. That is, in fact, the best way to do that. So let me show you what I'm talking about here. Um, Matt Thompson. Hang on a second. We're getting that thing again. It's just so bizarre. There we go. Matt Thompson did this book. And uh, The Man Cave. It was awesome. This was a, obviously it's a cookbook. It's 150 super delicious recipes and things like that. And totally crushed it. Ended up becoming a number one bestseller. Um, number one in cooking food and wine, super lucrative niche in publishing, hit number six on all of paid Kindle, and uh, oh yeah, the other question is, you know, if you don't have a product to sell, because back end sales, meaning people buy your book, they become, you know, they, they like you, they like what you have to say, so they're going to go on to the next stage, and all those kinds of fun things, you know, can you make money with that? Absolutely, absolutely you can. So this was... Uh, what I had recommended was that she, you know Sarah does not do blatant affiliate linking. You don't want to just put like you know a clickbank hop link into the body of the book kind of thing because that's just going to really not work out in anybody's favor. It just makes the whole thing look super ugly. And so what you want to do is make sure that it's kind of buried in there a little bit. And so it's it's easy. I, you know I, I'll teach you how to do that later. We won't stay on this thing. But yeah, absolutely, you can kill it 
with uh, pen names and with affiliate links and all that stuff. So you don't need your own business. Zero computer skills, this thing literally takes, once you have your manuscript, it takes like 25 seconds. So I'll show you how to do this. Really quick, that's where it is, kdp.amazon.com. If you're in America, if you're not, it might be something else. I don't know. I happen to live in Chicago, so that's what it is for me. But this is what it is. You click on Add New Title, and then I just get this stuff from my, you know, if I'm using a ghostwriter or whatever, uh, that I just copy and paste the description and the title in there. Add contributors, meaning put your author name in there. And then you hit on the next page, verify your publishing territories, pick how much you want to make on the thing, and basically you want to stick between two ninety nine and nine ninety nine because then you'll get seventy percent. And then click save and publish. I mean, that's pretty much it. It's absolutely that freaking simple. And so when you do this thing right, this is, you know, especially in nonfiction, this is like the world's most powerful business card. This is absolutely ridiculously huge. Like the, uh, um, I, I'm getting to be friends now with the owner of the gym that I go to. He owns this boot camp. His name's Dustin. And uh, so every morning, you know, he and his cronies kick my butt into a frothy, sweaty lather. And one thing that he told me was like, he said, yeah, having a book has really kind of been this huge thing for the gym because it gets people in there. It establishes your credibility and your authority and all those kinds of things. It's super fun. But here's the thing. When you have places like USA Today, Financial Times, like all these different places, like this is a huge business and everybody knows it. So self-publishing is getting to be mainstream. And so you have to do something that's going to stand out. You need to become above average. Remember at the beginning of this, I told you, like, we're looking at, I, I'm not even sure what the numbers were. It's, it's some astronomical amount of hundreds of thousands of books every single year are being pumped into the market. Does that mean there's competition? Does that mean that you have to fight harder? And the answer is not really. But you do have to do some things that are going to work for you. You have to become a best-selling author, and that's what I love about this stuff. And like I said at the very beginning, again, Zero tricks, zero smarmy techniques. Like this is just straight up hardcore sales. And I'll break down how this whole thing works in just a second. But we were able to hit number one in all of nonfiction, number ten on Amazon. Uh, we, uh, I mean, we moved thirty thousand dollars worth of books in the first seven days. Hit number two on the Wall Street Journal. And if you're not familiar with Penguin, Penguin is you know one of the big six publishers in the world, and their senior editor. Uh, reached out for us to say, hey, you know, can we work with you and stuff like that. Now, here's what's really cool. Let me, you know, there is money to be made in publishing. People typically, you know, I've heard this before. There's no money in books. Not true. Uh, James Patterson is the world's biggest author. Like he did 84 million dollars in 12 months. I mean, that is ridiculous. This guy sells more books faster than anyone I've ever seen, except us because we sold more books faster than him. Uh, we actually beat him in the hot new release category, absolutely throunced him when he first came out. It was really cool. And he, in fact, he even had a couple of days head start, and we still showed up and just kicked his little booty. So I was really excited about that. So when the stuff works, we have the right stuff, and this is what I'll break down in a second, it totally works. Now here's the big question. Was it, isn't Isabel already a huge name? I mean, she is the, the co-founder of the Beyond Diet, her and Jeff. Uh, they have a huge, huge, huge business. They've been building it for many years. And so, yeah, absolutely. And that's part of the equation. Part of what we're going to be talking about here is how you build that audience. You build that, you identify your audience, you build that audience, and you launch the book to that audience. So it's really important to keep to do that. But what about regular folks? So let's look at uh, Susan Leonard. She had never done stuff like this before. Her goal was to earn like a hundred bucks. You know, she'd never no bestseller ranking, no titles, no nothing like that. Um, she did this. She did eighty seven hundred sales in the first twenty four hours with this thing. Super cool. Uh, it was a cookbook. It went really, really well. And you could read here. You know, she's like, now that I know that it works, I want to be able to make a passive income so I can reduce my work down to four days a week. Have three young kids. Have to work a ton of hours. Thank you again. Uh, could have done all this. She made over a thousand bucks, and that was awesome. So I was super proud of her for doing that. So how do you do that? Let's get into the five steps on how to pull off these shenanigans. All right, so if you haven't started taking notes yet, please take notes because this would absolutely be the moment where you do that. So number one is you have to know why you're doing this. What's your outcome? Like what is the purpose behind you doing this? You know, is it to make money? Is it to do the career thing? What is it? Now, closely with this is you want to know why you're doing it. You also want to know who you're doing this for. So you want to think, who is my audience? And that kind of thing. Now step two is you have to start in a hot market because once you know where your audience is, you're going to know where they're looking. You're going to know what categories are going to be relevant to them. So if you're publishing paranormal romance, for example, 
you are probably not going to be publishing in cookbooks. This is just sort of like self-evident, but you would be amazed at how many people try to actually do things like that. It's very bizarre and it does not help. So you want to start in a hot market. This seems to fly in the face of conventional wisdom. And what, that, what I mean by that is most people want to look for an untapped market, something where nobody has been. Here's the thing. With the Internet being as prevalent as, as it is, people are everywhere, in every place, and if they're not, that means there's probably no money to be made. That's just kind of something you have to just deal with. That is the fact. So when you get in there, you want to look for where the people are, because that means there's buyers there. That means people want to read books on these subjects. So go and check that out. The other thing is, keywords are not a fundamental way that people search in Amazon. Yes, you can every now and then hit on one that does well for you and, and rank for it, but ultimately, people are looking for the categories and the concepts and the titles and the covers, and I'll show you that. So here's the, the info. You're looking for, and you can see it right there, Amazon bestseller ranking. You're looking for a ranking that's going to be somewhere between 2,000 and 50,000 where those people at the bottom of the first page, not just at the top, but on the bottom of that first page are, you know, right around there. Now, the reason for this is because you don't want to have to climb this massive hill. Like, for example, uh, back when Hunger Games was out, it was like in the number one category. If you wanted to hit number one in children's literature and fiction, dude, you're going to have to sell like 50 million copies of that book, and that's just not fair. Whereas if you want to just get a toehold on that thing so you could start building, maybe you want to find a category that will let you sell five copies. That's a little bit better. And remember, we're not talking about hitting number one right now. We're talking about building up to it. So the next piece is you got to hook them with your title. Tell them what they're going to get. Fiction and nonfiction are pretty much exactly the same when it comes to this kind of thing. Your title need to, needs to reflect the expectations of your target reader and try to convey exactly what they're going to get from your book. And so you want to keep this super obvious. Like until you're a household name, keep it pretty obvious. Like how to finally live debt free and wealthy. Scrumptious slow cooker appetizers. How to cure bad breath. If you're doing nonfiction, just put how to in front of it. I experimented with this a lot and really coming down to it, just putting how to. Don't get too creative. You don't need to get cute. Just do the thing that works. Great example from fiction. I absolutely love this. This and this kind of slops over into a little bit of the cover thing that I'll cover in a second. Uh, but the title was Uluru Dreaming. It was 345,000 horror thriller. He was barely moving this. He essentially could not give this thing away. And he's like, why? And I'm like, well, I read the book. It was amazing. It was really well done. And I, I mean, I was blown away by this. Because if you like horror and thriller, I recommend this book. I really do. And it, the problem was it just looked terrible. It didn't make any sense. Like the whole, the presentation of the book just sent people into a tailspin of confusion. Like, let's clean this up a little bit. So we did it a little bit better. We called it Fear of the Dark because that's what it was about. It was about these things that would come out of the dark and just lay waste to humanity. I'm like, this is great. Change the title, change the cover, shot up, did 91 sales in a few days. So we didn't even really market this thing. We just presented it correctly to people who were already looking for it. That's the best part about Amazon. Is that they have it's buyers, and so if you present them something that they want to buy, then you have dramatically increased your chances that they'll be like, okay, I'll just buy it. And so there you go. The next piece is the cover, and you can see there. You know, we upgraded the cover a couple of times for Fear of the Dark, and that's what I'm not sure if he used that new one. But uh, the bad covers are one of the biggest reasons books don't sell. It's a huge mistake. It is absolutely huge. Please have a professionally designed cover. Um, so this is a great case study for this one. Uh, Christy had done these cookbooks and she hit me up in the forum and, and it was funny because like the first thing she said to me was, hey, your stuff doesn't work, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, well, that's not true because it's great and I think it's awesome. Let me see your books. So she gave me the links and I was like, holy mother of sweet crap, this is not going to fly. Um, it was actually pretty funny. It, 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 literally the worst covers I'd ever seen. I'm like, okay, listen, I'm not going to mince words. These, cover, these covers are like vile and pig-like. Please fix them. Like, it, oh, it was just, it was insane. And so she did. She went out there and she tested my theory, let's call it, on one book. And her sales jumped from 18 bucks a month to about 100 bucks a month. And so she had 13 titles out there. So if she could do that with all 13 titles, that is a huge, huge, huge jump in income just from one little tweak. 
And this is another one because you always want to be publishing in a series. This is really important because when you have a fan base, when you're nurturing those readers, they want more from you. There is a common thing where people like sort of, you know, Dan Kennedy, that direct response marketing guy calls it selling from the back of your heels, where people are kind of timid about selling stuff to people. I'm like, don't do it. Don't be timid. Just give them more of what they want. And the best way to do this, and Robert Kiyosaki, which is with his whole Rich Dad Poor Dad series, is an excellent example of that. And so you can see what this is. It's takeover branding. You can see she's just owning every single aspect of the bestseller list. So it's super awesome. Uh, Marge, keep an eye on Marge because I'm going to come back to her in a second. She ended up, and it was funny because the first time I showed this, she was actually on the webinar because I was talking to a bunch of students. I'm like, all right, look what Marge did. But it turned out she had three, and I missed them. She had three in the top 20. But you can just tell of the Marge book when, when you see it. It's pretty awesome. So let's really do a quick recap here. Know your outcome. Grab a hot market, meaning know your audience. Hook them with your titles and use powerful covers. So you want to look amazing. And then when you put that all together and you build a series around it, there's your takeover brand. So, then, so the next and final step, and this is really important, you actually have to use an effective and a proven system. And I've been, I've been kind of harping on this the entire presentation, is you have to do something that is proven and effective. You don't want these short-lived loophole kind of concepts. You want to use a system that will work for you again and again and again. Like, for example, with Pure Fat Burning Fuel, what we did was we built, they built an audience, and then we just figured out what the audience wanted and gave them what they wanted, and tons of people bought it. That's what works. Just do that. It is literally that system, or I'm, I'm sorry, that simple. So you don't have to be the best writing author. For example, my book, How to Finally Live Debt-Free and Wealthy, I would say that was probably one of the worst written books I've ever put out because I cranked it out in just a couple of days and I did not edit the thing. Don't be like me. But it sold brilliantly because it's what people wanted. You know, so even though there was probably some you know, grammatical errors or whatever it was and some commas missing, it gave people the stuff that they needed to, they needed to know in order to help them get to the solution. And so the same thing with Hunger Games. One of the best-selling Kindle series of all times. It was right, you know, the book sales were rivaling Twilight. I mean, that is massive because Twilight's like a multi-billion-dollar franchise, and so Hunger Games is starting to kick its butt in that kind of regard. So, but not everybody liked it. That's the thing. It's not everybody was like, oh, there's an Fifty Shades of Grey, great example. There's another multi-billion-dollar franchise that came out of eBooks, basically. But not everybody liked it. You know, so you don't have to be the best writing author. And there is not a person on the planet who's going to say that Fifty Shades of Grey is the best written book of all time. But I love the example of Hunger Games. You'll see why in just a second here. So case study, and Nicole had emailed me all this stuff. You know, she had never published a Kindle. Literally, her, her and her mom grabbed a copy of the course, and they're like, all right, let's get this a swing. Let's do this. Uh, she had never published, and she uploaded it on January 27th. It's important to know the date. And her ranking, because they were doing a little bit of the background stuff like I was talking about, she got 51,000 in the paid Kindle sort, number five for special occasions. So she was on the list. Remember, you just want to start with the toehold on that list. That's all you need to get. And so she had only moved 15 units uh, before February 2nd. So that's just a couple of days. And she got, uh, you know, she went and asked people, hey, would you take a look at my book? Would you review it? Uh, you know, so six likes, not a big deal. Uh, nine reviews, super basic and check this out so she did some promo on this three days after she landed number four in the entire paid Kindle store he hit number one in nonfiction number one in cooking food and wine number one in special occasions number one in holiday all this kind of stuff I mean she absolutely freaking crushed it and so that's what happens when you start using these systems uh, and but but that's not really it because there's a lot of different ways that you can get discovered inside of Amazon. There's just list upon list upon list of different ways to do that. So, so remember how Amazon has these 300 credit cards. Well, they want you to be successful. So when your book is selling, they are going to probably give you more exposure. They're probably going to give you more ways to be discovered. And so what you want to think about is every sale, every download, every review is like a little vote in the system. Obviously, not all of them count as much as others. But these votes give you a better chance of getting seen. And so that's what happened with me is, you know, I did, uh, did a promo. It's one I call Pulsing. I'll touch on that in a second. We can let your book go free 
for a certain amount of time, and then when it goes back to paid, if you hit a fast promotion again, you can get this super spike of sales, because obviously free book downloads do not count as much as paid, but with this, it was awesome, because I got so many paid uh, buyers, actual physical buyers, <clears throat> at the end of the thing, they featured my book as the featured book for business and investing on the entire landing page of the Kindle store, which was super, super cool. And so there's another way, right? So, you know, email marketing is like ridiculously gigantic. Like that is a super huge thing. Email marketing is just like the only thing to be doing. Well, Amazon is probably the biggest email market of all time. And so I'll give you some examples of what they do. They'll send out emails, hey, customers who bought this might also like this. Great way to get discovered. Are you new? New is always an important thing. Uh, then I call this the hodgepodge, it's like new monthly release, links to the bestseller category, and so they'll give you lots of exposure and things like that. Multiple titles, massive. You can you can absolutely uh, have Amazon hook you up with one of these things. Now, like I said, these these things are not guaranteed, but they are nice when it happens and to make it to stack the deck in your favor. You want to be doing this stuff, right? So I said, remember March, remember March, because Amazon promoted her book. It was awesome. So she ended up forwarding me that email. I was super excited to see her do that. So that's uh, that's the kind of stuff that you know can happen in there when you're doing it. So picture your ideal outcome, and this is what you want to do when you leverage a system like this. You know, know what you want. Like know your outcome going in, and just put one foot in front of the other, and really start pushing it. So that's literally everything right there is exactly how you can uh, create a recipe to become a bestseller. And you know it works. You know it worked back in the day. It worked yesterday. It works today, and more than likely, it's going to work very, very well tomorrow, uh, because it's based. This stuff is based around tactics that just work. That you can you can use them and continuously create your outcome. Like build an audience, go to a, you know sell them a book. It's the easiest thing. So let me show you really quick how we can take this to the next level, and then I will get through to all of your questions. So it's called Perfect Publishing System, and. This is an awesome system. I'm really excited about it because it's been able to help so many people go from zero to blockbuster bestseller literally in as little as 48 hours sometimes. Now, obviously, that's after you put the book on Kindle and things. This is an eight-part modulized system. It's going to take you step-by-step step all the way start to finish through each aspect of your entire publishing empire. So in module one, I like to call this success from the start because this is how you kick it off for yourself. Uh, it's behind the scenes. I'm going to show you exactly how to create the perfect publishing business for you. And like I said, sometimes it's going to be about affiliate marketing, selling other people's stuff. Sometimes it's about selling your stuff. And sometimes it's just about making money with the books. And so you have to kind of know that a little bit going in. And I'll show you how to decipher this for yourself. And also how to avoid marketplaces that are just very overly saturated. It, it just Yeah, you, places you just don't want to be. It looks initially like you want to be there, but no. Also, how, you know, who are your readers? How do you find them? Where, where do they hang out? So I'll be going through all that stuff. And then what elements of your book publishing do you want to focus on versus which ones are going to waste time? Like there are billions of blogs out there. And I know this because I have like my little email news feed every day is like blowing up with this stuff. And 90% of it is just like, ouch, stop it, please. It's just a bunch of noise. And so you're going to get un unlimited access to all of these tools that you need to succeed on this. Over my shoulder videos, MP3 audios, student case studies, cheat sheets, swipe files, absolutely everything. First case study I'm going to give you is Inside the Man Cave. That's a great interview. You'll really, really like this. Um, module two, fast, easy, effective publishing business. So this is how you dominate the market. So when you've chosen the market and the method, now we're going to go and you know work up to getting you uh, as a big name in that thing. There's th really three, I mean, there's obviously a lot more types of books, but I found three that are going to create the maximum impact for you. And then you want to find out what is it your market wants to buy. Like how do you know what it is that they want to get so that you can give it to them. So I'll show you how to do that. Module three, this is awesome. This is not your typical outsourcing. I like to think of it as empire building. And uh, what was cool is one of my students ended up teaching this one because he was so effective at this. He ended up going from zero uh, to 650 in a day. And he was doing right about that per day. Uh, within just a couple of weeks of launching his business, and so it was a really, really effective method. So he'll, he's going to—he, uh, this is a webinar recording where I had him teach this stuff because uh, he was—he was gangster at it. I'm like, I'm staying out of the way. You just go ahead and talk because clearly you have this locked on. But this is how you can get your books built for pennies on the dollar, like really high quality stuff, and just continuously crank these things out. 
uh, you know, not crap, but like good stuff. Also, module four, we're gonna we're gonna cover your title, your subtitle, your description. Super vital stuff. Like this stuff is really, really, really important. So how do you create these things? Uh, you know, there's like I said, there's three versions of this that you can do, and also the biggest mistakes so that you can avoid them. Because a lot of people make some crazy freaking mistakes with this stuff. Uh, module five, uh, we're gonna have the book cover because that is ridiculously important. Remember, you know, they all say don't judge a book by the cover, but that's exactly what people do. So how to avoid the mistakes that people make, one of which being, you know, hiring a crappy designer, and the other big mistake is hiring a ridiculously expensive designer. I have seen so many cover artists charging like 1800 bucks plus royalties. No, 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 no. Don't ever pay that. So I'll show you how to do this. Module six, I call this book linking and how to get social proof. This is really important because when you're building these little empires, you want to make sure all the books reinforce each other and do it properly. So there's a method to the madness here. So I'll show you how to publish, when to publish, when to promote, when not to promote, and then like I said, how to weave your titles into a big sales funnel, and then how to get good reviews because uh, you never, ever, ever want to be buying reviews. That's just not okay ever. And so how to do that without getting your account banned. And uh, also we'll look at pricing strategies because clearly that's a huge one. There's a lot of reasons to sell a book and make more money, but there's also some reasons and very strategic ones, depending on the business model, to sell it a little bit cheaper. So we'll talk about pricing strategies and how to move people up your chain and stuff like that uh, in Module 6. In Module 7, this is important. I'm going to show you how to set up your platform. Super, super, super important to set up your platform. This is how people are going to find you. By your platform, I'm talking about all of your online ecosystems, how to get them to work together coherently so that you can be, as, as Pat Flynn, the podcaster, said, you can be everywhere, but you can be everywhere effectively. Because you don't just want to sort of hurl junk into the ecosystem. It doesn't really help you. So this is how to do this right. It'll take years off your learning curve. And then eight, this is the sales strategies. Remember, we have to build the right business and then fill it with the right books and the right people. Then the sales strategies become effective. So this is exactly how, when, why, where to pulse. And there are the pulsing I mentioned earlier. That's how you can you you can go free. There are lots of reasons for that. There are lots of different techniques you can use these days uh, to play around with this stuff. And in fact, what's funny is a lot of my initial publishing success had absolutely nothing to do with pulsing because it wasn't available at the time, but when it did become available, it was super cool. And so you could do price pulsing, you could do free pulsing, uh, you could do bonuses, but like all sorts of different ways to do it. Also, how to get listed in Kindle's hidden niches, and there's a cool way to do that. Also, exclusive access in this one to a closed-door mastermind recording. I'm actually going to show you how one of my buddies uh, ended up selling over 800,000 books in one year. If you don't know who Simon & Schuster are, they are probably the number one traditional publisher on the planet. This guy was their biggest author for an entire year uh, by doing this stuff. It was really, really cool. And also, how to keep your sales going and using these really simple techniques. Like I said, this stuff is very sustainable. It's A lot of it's very traditional, and I've, I've changed it up so that it works really, really well for, you know, for the self-publishing industry. And then also exclusive access, you know, five powerful strategies. Just follow these things. You can shoot yourself up the bestseller list, keep it there. That's where you want to be. You want to, you want to keep the exposure going. And so all of this stuff has been wrapped in this anti-information overload step-by-step -step system so you can go at your own pace. Um, we, I used to do this as like, okay, week one, you get this. Now I just give you everything. You just go through it at your leisure. So that's what it is. It's eight powerful step-by-step -step modules breaking down exactly what you need to do so you can, you know, you can absolutely kill it at this thing. And it's really so fun. I love this stuff. If this is something that you really enjoy, it's going to feel like it's a game because that's what it is. It is really just a game. And so the quick value breakdown, each one of these things is built like almost an entire training course in of itself. Uh, so we have week one, the uh, kick success kickstart, a 497 value, ultimate marketing domination, 997, hands-free empire, huge stuff in there. That, that can really change the way that you look at your business. 997 value, getting the words that sell, 297, cover creation, 197. So basically, I mean, you could read what's on the screen. A total value of over $6,000. And uh, in my previous publishing company, when we were working with uh, consult, when we were consulting, our fees would be in the neighborhood of thirty to $37,000 to basically 
teach people or do this for them. And so you're getting a total value of 43,776 bucks here because uh, this is my full brain dump of like, okay, hey, here's the thing to do to make this stuff work. And literally everybody that we've worked directly gone on to, to really crush it out there in the, in, the, in the publishing world, so it totally works. Now, the regular price of this uh, was $4,997, uh, $4, uh, but obviously we're going to have you save it over $3,000 on this, and it's not even $1,900. And also, just so you know, we have a 60-day money-back guarantee on this because I run this through ClickBank. So if for any reason whatsoever you... Uh, you know, you're not satisfied, not a problem, let us know, and, you know, per ClickBank's conditions and stuff, you have 60 days to get 100% money back. Uh, so what it is, because we're doing this with Thai code, and ignore that 30 days right there, but if you go to perfectpublishingsystem.com slash Thai, that's going to send you right to the order page. Now, really quickly, this is a fun little sort of awkward moment that I get to share with you is we are dealing, we're trying to deal with Google. They're, they're giving a malware warning on the site. The site is scrubbed and it has been cleaned. For whatever reason, Google is saying that AWeber, yes, folks, the autoresponder company, they are saying that having AWeber on our page is somehow linked to malware. So I'm sorry for that. Uh, it's been, we've literally been, I've been working, we're trying to work with them for about six weeks now on this. The page is clean. It was cleaned again yesterday. There's nothing there that's going to hurt you. You're totally fine. So you can actually click through and click the keep going to the site button. So I apologize for that today. Uh, obviously bad timing. Uh, it should have been cleaned up weeks ago, but that's just just so you know. Uh, but go to perfectpublishingsystem.com slash tie. This course used to sell for um, $1,997, uh, but we're doing it for $297 through ClickBank for a limited time, 60-day money-back guarantee. Now, let's do the frequently asked questions, and then I'll get to your actual uh, live questions on this one. But the biggest one I always hear from everybody is how much money can I make with this thing? The answer is you need to shift your mindset. Can you make money with it? Of course you can make money with it. But that's not the thing. It's even, you know, when I was focused on that, it, didn't, it doesn't really work that well. What you want to do is focus on how much value can you bring to your target audience? Because remember, the goal here is to be in business for a long time so you guys can make more money over, not just now, but also in the future. That's the best way to do it. So shift your thinking. You can do whatever you want. I mean, we've done great with this. I've done great with this. My students have done great with this. But we all focus on providing value to the market. Another great one, how much does it cost after I buy your course? And so the leg it, it really, not that much. I mean, it depends on how you want to do it. If you go with like the, method I, the methods I recommended to create your books, it can be free or maybe a couple hundred bucks. You know, it, it's totally up to you. I recommend doing the interview transcript thing, kind of a hybrid model. It's pretty good. But I don't pay a lot of money for my covers, 25, 17 bucks. You can see those look like super professional covers. They are super professional covers. Like they could belong on, you know, the bookshelf in any grocery store or bookstore. And uh, so, yeah, that's my, my goal is when I start my promotion, I want to be able to recoup whatever I spent on that book within about 36 hours. That's my goal. Now, everybody can be different depending on what you spend. Um, how much time does this take? And the answer is this is up to you. It, you know, if you start it now, it can go very quick. If you have books already published, then it can be very freaking fast because what ends up happening is more than likely, and, this, and I'll show you a guy who wrote in about this, if you have books already published and they're not selling very well, what typically happens is you'll go through the first two modules of this thing and you'll be like, oh, I get it now. Make a couple of tweaks and then all of a sudden it all starts working. If you don't have a book, if you don't have an audience, if you don't know what you're doing, it will take you a little bit longer. It does not have to take a long time. It does not have to take that time at all. Um, but really just pay attention, go through it, crank through it. If you do uh, the hands-free empire building in module three, you can let other people do it for you. Does this work with anything or just cookbooks? And the answer is everything. This works in every market you could possibly imagine. Uh, am I going to focus on Nook, iBooks? Getting to the point where I'm going to be updating the course very soon to talk about this because the other platforms have not yet caught up, but there are now starting to be different reasons to use them. It's They're not as powerful as Amazon. Being exclusive to Amazon is fine. It's still a good idea. Uh, but there are starting to be reasons. So if you, you know, and, and I will be talking about those later, you won't make a lot of money from those other platforms. Like most authors just don't. 
Amazon typically accounts for 90% of their revenue. So don't worry too much about it right now. When it becomes time, I'll let you know. Uh, like I said, existing books, but will this help? Absolutely. Absolutely, this will help you. I, in fact, I love studies from that stuff uh, where people say those things. Will your, will your system work with physical books? The answer is yes, but here's, here's a little caveat to that. Do what I'm teaching you inside this course first with your digital books. And the reason I say that is because I want you to get your book selling really well because you can make adjustments on a digital book and it's live in less than 24 hours. Whereas if you want to make adjustments on a physical book, it can take a month and it costs money. So get the digital book selling like crazy first, then release the physical books. So there you go. Like I said, you know, 60 day money back guarantee, perfectpublishingsystem.com slash tie. It, please ignore the ridiculous warning that those folks have given us. Um, it's absolutely, utterly meaningless. But there you go. We have ourselves a $43,000 value, limited time offer for $297 through ClickBank. That is not the right thing. There we go. 60 day money back. Um, perfect publishing system dot com slash tie good times indeed looking forward to seeing that I, and uh, also there's a uh, there's a Facebook group attached to this so just let me know uh, you know request access to that and we'll get you all hooked up and those kinds of things all right let me shrink the screen here just a quick second now my good people we can start doing these live questions let me expand this if I can let me see all right. So Wayne, I'm thinking I have answered a couple of your questions at least. So if you have questions, throw them in, I mean, the question box. Uh, so Wayne's saying, I presently have eight books on Kindle and have no rankings. How can I get them good or bad? Rankings, I just broke it all down for you. Check your title, uh, check your cover. And another great way to do it is go out and ask people for reviews. And just hustle it up. I mean, that's all there is. Do a couple of promotions like I showed you how to do there. Uh, do titles make a difference? Not the difference, but they make a difference. Uh, what is the best price range for a 60 to 90 page book? If it's in fiction, free. Uh, if it is in nonfiction, you can charge whatever the market's willing to pay you. Best length for an ebook? Do they still have two page special reports? No, do not put up a two page special report in Kindle. It will go nowhere fast. Uh, best length? There is no best length. The best length is for really as long as, as, as long as it needs to be to get the point across. I have sold 60-page books for $2.99 and had almost non-existent refund rates with it. Uh, people bought it like crazy and it sold great. Obviously, that's too short for a physical book. Uh, but if you're in fiction, you need to be around the 50,000-word mark uh, to, to be considered a novelist. Is this session recorded? I'm trying. Hopefully it does. After all the technical difficulties, I don't really know. Ah, good kind. Kong is asking, does the system still work even though Amazon has the unlimited reading for 10 bucks? Uh, yeah, the system works just fine because not a lot of people are for well, I mean, first of all, it doesn't even matter uh, because you get paid when people download and read your books within that system. So if you're exclusive to Amazon, which I teach in the course, uh, but that's something that I, you know, I, there's just not a lot of data on that. There's tons of indie authors that are doing that, but it's more for fiction than nonfiction. And also, I, yeah, so basically the answer is yes. That's just one more way of getting paid through Amazon. All right. Amazon shows the first five pages or so of the book. They show the first 10% usually. Uh, how do you show enough great content to get them to buy but not give, get away too much? Uh, make sure you have a longer book and just write well. That's really all there is to it. It's uh, Your introduction should be setting people up to want to buy the book anyway. That's how you use that preview thing. So you're not writing the book. Like If your book is only five pages long, it's, you have, a, you have a, an article or a report. Don't publish that stuff in Kindle. Do a real book. You know, maybe 30,000 words or something like that. And that way you have something to give them. Well, there you go, ladies and germs. Uh, you can hit over here. You know what? Let me actually send you. Hold on. I'm going to text everybody the actual URL. We'll go into chat. And I will send it to the audience. 
There you go. Cool. Yeah. So I'm here uh, for as long as you guys need. So if you have any questions, absolutely hit me up right now. If not, then I'm super excited that you guys came in. Thank you so much. Uh, go to perfectpublishingsystem.com slash Thai. Like I said, there is a uh, Let's see here. Yeah, like I said, there, there it's actually it gives you this warning, and I'm, I really apologize about that. Like I said, for whatever reason, uh, Google has temporarily decided to recognize AWeber as malware, which I, is not true. Uh, so the site was cleaned. There was nothing on it to begin with. We're trying to work with them uh, to get it all off, but it's completely fine. No one has had a problem. And I, the, all the students that are in there uh, said the same thing. Let's see here. Um, cool. Oh, thank you, TP. Thanks for buying. Uh, if you purchased or are having problems because of that malware warning, there is a thing where you can click through to go to it. Um, I will, you know what, I'm going to actually answer you here. Send me your info, forward me your receipt. I will pop you into the, the website. I'll pop you into the website uh, by hand, uh, in, you know, as soon as I'm done with this webinar. So, yeah. All right. So for everybody that buys that, uh, it seems that malware warning is kind of killing people. Uh, any suggested price for fiction how to? Wayne, uh, that is, I don't know. I don't know. It depends on your market. It depends on how long the book is. It depends on how good the book is. It depends on what people are willing to pay. Let's see here. Registration confirmation says there's a part two and three to this one. I don't think there is. Maybe. Sales and marketing, 60 to 100 pages. I'd go 399. See if you could do 399 to 299. Shorter books like that and really big, really, you know, blown out markets like sales and marketing uh, can be, you just kind of want to go cheap. Unless you want to go expensive. That's the other thing. It depends on why you want to do it. And I cover this in the course. And you are welcome. So yeah, looking forward to seeing everybody in the course. This will be a good time. All right, guys, any more questions? Any more questions? And thank you, everybody, for grabbing a copy of this. So it was very, very, very lovely to have you. BJ's asking, is 25 pages long enough for a, for a book? That's called a short. If it's, a, if it's fiction, absolutely not. You're going to give that away for free. Uh, 25 pages, I think you can do better. I think you're probably not. If, tw if you're at, here's, here's my philosophy. If you're only at 25 pages, probably what's happened is, and yes, it can be long enough. It absolutely can be. But you're probably not setting people up to understand why the information you're giving them is effective. Two-thirds of your book is probably going to become explaining why they need it. That's super important that you do those kinds of things. And that, you can write 25 pages just on that alone because every chapter you need to set up and that can take one or two pages. And so if you use the method that I broke down in today's webinar, your, your book is going to be close to like 150 pages. And you'll do it very quickly. So I would say 25 is probably, you're probably not delivering enough value. And what's interesting is sometimes value is not information. Sometimes value is based on the emotional connection. Can you buy tomorrow? No, Wayne, you specifically cannot buy tomorrow. I will not let it happen. You have to do it right now. Give me your money. I'm kidding, dude. Yeah, you can buy tomorrow. That's fine. It'll be $9,000, but you can do it tomorrow. So two-thirds of the book will explain why they should... No, not why they should buy. No, no I'm sorry. Two-thirds of the book does not explain why they should buy. It explains why the information that you're talking about is relevant to them. The introduction should begin with... This is kind of why, this, this is one of those things where I explained this for several hours inside the course, and we don't have that kind of time today, so I'm going to try to give you the nutshell answer of this, is that you have to, you identify with where people are, and then you move them to where you want them to be through story. So if you have the solution to their problem, sometimes you need to explain to them why they're experiencing that problem, what the, the problem might feel like to them. And you need to tell that in the form of a story. And that sometimes takes up as much as two-thirds of every chapter. And so you explain why they need it, what it's going to do for them, how to do it, what to do next, and then move on to your next topic. But that's you know a format that I like to do. 
Mm -hmm. Good questions, though. Good questions. Mm -mm -mm. Using Google AdWords, what is the process of identifying the hottest selling subjects? I would highly recommend not using Google AdWords to find out what the hottest selling subjects are. I would look at the best seller lists on Amazon and see what's selling. See what is consistently selling. You know, that's you can Google that, like what's you know, what genres are consistently selling. What markets are out there? Don't just look at and this is one of the things I teach in the course is you don't just look at books. It's not just about looking at Amazon. I mean, yeah, when you're gonna write something, you want to say, okay, is this gonna be a hot market in this environment? And if the answer is yes, great. But sometimes it's not. But that doesn't necessarily mean that it's a bad thing to get into. Like Amazon might not be selling a whole lot of books on like how to stop sweating or lose band boobs, but that's not to say that's not a big subject. So I don't use AdWords. Uh, like, oh, I, I think you're talking about the keyword tool. I would prob or whatever it's called now, keyword disc. I, I don't know. I haven't used a keyword thing in like two years now. Um, look at the bestseller list. That's really all I can say. That's going to be the best way. Excellent questions. Excellent questions. Damn, we still got a ton of dudes on this thing. So, and by the way, seriously, just to reiterate, because I saw the, the numbers jump up again. Uh, yeah, that that ridiculous warning on the site. I seriously apologize for that. That's kind of embarrassing, but that that happens. Yeah, between my basement flooding, my child screaming, and a malware warning on the site. Thank you and welcome to a professionally executed webinar. This is some awesome sauce. But I'm excited. So I mean, hopefully, I gave you guys what you needed. Everything was cool. Uh, how many pages is 50,000 words translate to? That's considered a full-length novel. I'd say maybe 200-ish, depending on your formatting. You know, that's uh, it's pretty easy. But if you're doing, like, if you're using, let me get out my calculator here, because I suck at math. Uh, so let's say you're doing the method that I was talking about today, where you're, like, batching it. Come on now. I can hit the right button. Got this iPhone thing that is just waiting for my iPhone Plus to show up, and it's just killing me. Uh, so 50,000 words, I can type about, let's call it 600 words a minute. So it's 83 minutes, let's call it 84 minutes, divided by 3. Eh, my math sucks and I'm not sure this equation works, but that's about two hours a day. You can pull that off for about two hours a day in about uh, 14 days. What is my opinion of public domain publishing? I think it will get your ass handed to you if you try to do it. Um, my opinion on it, it will ruin your business. It is a complete waste of time. And your account will probably get banned. So I'd prefer that you did not do it. I do not teach how to do public domain because it is probably the second worst idea in publishing ever. So I mean, yeah. Let's see. Login screen. Right, send uh, TP. Did I send you my? Uh, I think I sent you my email. I'll give it to you again. Shoot me, just forward me your receipt. There you go, man. Yeah, just yeah, just shoot me that over, and, and uh, before I go dashing off into the ether, I will uh, get you hooked into that thing. So if anybody else is having some trouble because of that uh, ridiculous stuff then uh, we'll be all good. Oh, well, if you did forward me a receipt, then you shall be all good. I have not yet uh, moved over to the email because I'm still speaking to everyone. So I'll give me about, let's say, another couple minutes. All right, hold on a second. Let me send you... Nancy, thank you for buying. I am sending you my personal email. Forward it to that because uh, the support email I, uh, we have that going to a different place, and I will. Uh, they're a little bit slower, and I figure since you guys are on the webinar and have decided to entrust your hard-earned cold cash uh, to me, which is awesome, thank you, then uh, I, you just shoot me the receipt. I will get your uh, the email that are, that's in that, and I'll just set you up with an account uh, by hand right after this. So awesome. Okay, thank you, Nancy. Let's see. What will be covered in the next two sessions? Absolutely nothing. There, are, I do not believe there are two more sessions. That might have just been a typo or something from a previous thing that he was doing. Alex, what? 
just got home. Hope there'll be a replay. Yes, I think there is. I'm recording on my end. Ty's recording on his end. We're going to try this to get it, to get it up for you uh, pretty quick. And, and this is the shocker, prepare yourselves for this, we're even going to try to do it on a page that does not give you a malware warning. How about them, Apples? This will be super cool. Uh, BJ, does my course cover how to write a description? Absolutely. We talk about these things, man. We absolutely talk about these things. So yeah, go grab it it's through ClickBank. It's awesome. Please ignore the malware warning. It's very unfortunate. Uh, PerfectPublishingSystem.com slash Ty, because he is the wonderful man who hosted this webby web and easy, as uh, Dr. Kern calls it. Awesome, guys. All right, so I think we're good to go here. Once again, thank you so much. I hope you took oceans of notes. I know I did. It'll be cool. So it was glad. I'm, seriously, I am so happy you guys are on here. Uh, and yeah, if you have any questions, just uh, hit me up, and I'll chat with you soon. Toodles!